Some of the best engines Toyota has ever made have been V8s. They spent the last 61 years developing them to be some of the best performing, smoothest, and most reliable engines on the market. They were so close to getting them perfect, and you know what they did instead? They killed them. So in this video, we're gonna reminisce about the glory days and talk about why Toyota made such a drastic change in direction. Let's gather together to pour one out for Toyota's fallen V8 homies, starting from the beginning. First, we have to talk about the Toyota Hemi. And no, I'm not making a joke about the Toyota 5.7 being kind of similar to Ram's Hemi. I'm talking about the actual Toyota Hemi. You see, a lot of people believe that the 1UZ was the first V8 that Toyota ever made, but Toyota actually made their first V8 engine 25 years before the 1UZ came out. And it was just called the V engine. There were five different versions of the Toyota V engine, starting in 1963 with a 2.6 liter version, and going all the way up to 1997 where it grew to four liters. Much like many other Toyota engines, it was co-developed with Yamaha and it got its Hemi nickname based on, you guessed it, its hemispherical shaped combustion chambers. No surprise there. It wasn't exactly a powerhouse, even of its highest powered version. It only made 187 horsepower, 239 pound-feet of torque, but it was smooth as butter and reliable, and that's why Toyota put it in their super luxurious Century model up until they replaced it with the V12, which was obviously even smoother. Toyota brought the 1UZ to the masses in models like the LS400, which by the way, kind of kicked off the whole Lexus brand back in 1989 in North America. It was considered a pretty high-tech engine at its time, and people still swap those into other vehicles to this day because there's so many fans of the 1UZ. There was also a 3UZ engine that was used in the updated Lexus models like the GS430 and the SC430, and it was basically just a larger version of the 1UZ. When the 2UZ V8 engine showed up, it took the world by storm. Toyota's 4.7 liter V8 engine is considered by many to be one of the best V8s of all time. I'm a little biased. Toyota themselves must have been a pretty big fan of it too, considering they put it in nearly every friggin' truck they made at the time, aside from the Tacoma and the FJ Cruiser. Remember those million mile Tundras that everybody was talking about online a few years ago? Well, a lot of people don't realize that those trucks had the smaller 4.7 liter V8 engine in them and not the bigger 5.7 that was so popular and that most people associate with the Tundra. And unlike the Toyota trucks, Lexus chose to only offer this 2UZ V8 in its GX and LX 470s because it's just so dang smooth and reliable. The 1UR engine replaced the 2UZ in the Toyota trucks and the Lexus LS 460. At 4.6 liters of displacement, it was slightly smaller, but it put up better performance numbers on the board. It was also a timing chain engine, rather than having a timing belt that needed to be replaced, like on the older 4.7s. Finally, Toyota decided to pick a fight with the big boys and came out with the 5.7 liter V8 engine. They put this in the Tundra, the Sequoia, the LX570, and the 200 series Land Cruiser. It was able to pump out similar performance figures to its American competitors, but it did so in an incredibly reliable manner. Toyota doesn't clown around when it comes to its legendary Land Cruiser reputation, right? So it has to maintain that level of build quality and reliability in order to have anything to do with that truck. So the fact that Toyota put this 3UZ in the Land Cruiser tells you a lot. Now, one thing all of these Toyota V8s had in common was the fact that they are thirsty, real thirsty. Like my V8 4Runner here gets like 12 miles per gallon in the city with the current setup. Not good. Toyota was one missing link away from having the perfect V8 engines, but instead of continuing to develop them to be more fuel efficient, they basically said, thanks for the times, and put a bullet in the back of their head. <laughs> that was kind of aggressive. Let's lighten the mood. We have two new designs in the Canadian Gearhead storefront in honor of, you guessed it, the last of the V8s. We've got one for the 4Runner and one for the Tundra, and for the first time ever, we're offering these in both t-shirts and in hoodies. These hoodies, by the way, are super warm. And how do I know that? Well, I was outside shoveling snow in mine the other day, like a proper Canadian, and it kept me warm and cozy. I will say though, these are more of an athletic fit. So if you want your hoodie to feel and fit a little bit more baggy, I would suggest ordering a size up. So if you want to support the channel and help me to be able to keep on pumping out free content for you guys, head over to CanadianGearhead.com and buy yourself a shirt. 
Now let's talk about why Toyota gave up on their V8s. Governments worldwide are enforcing stricter fuel economy and emission standards. Now, V8 engines are great and everything, but it's true that they do produce more emissions than a smaller turbocharged engine, for example. Unfortunately, this is totally out of Toyota's control because as long as we have government officials that believe that climate change is being caused by Chad driving his pickup truck to work for 10 minutes every day, this isn't going to change anytime soon. If Toyota wants the powers that be to allow them to continue selling cars and trucks, they kind of have no choice but to kiss the ring and comply with these rules. The cost of living is getting seriously high. It's rough out here. A lot of truck buyers are getting sick of paying the big bucks at the pump, so if manufacturers can offer higher MPGs to them, that's a pretty big selling point. In the real world, do these new trucks actually get the impressive fuel economy that's advertised? I'm not so sure. I think if you've got a heavy foot, or you tow a lot, they don't exactly seem to be quite as efficient as they claim to be. They're definitely an improvement though. People who buy trucks tend to tow stuff or load a bunch of weight in them. Typically, a big V8 engine was always the go-to setup for the kind of low-end grunt that you needed if you were going to be working your truck like this. Now, love them or hate them, but these smaller turbocharged engines and hybrids are starting to put up some pretty serious performance figures. Hear me out. Previously, a roughly 400 pound-feet of torque was the most that you could get out of a Toyota V8 engine in any platform. And nowadays, you can get more than that in just a small little 4Runner. It's crazy, right? I had the pleasure of driving an EcoBoost F-150, and while I'm a die-hard V8 fan through and through, I have to admit, the performance of that truck was no joke. It had some serious power. Toyota's new turbocharged hybrid powertrains deliver V8-like performance, or better, but if they can do that while saving you money on gas, then of course that's going to garner some attention. But there are a few trade-offs. They're less reliable, less smooth, they've got less character, and let's be honest, they just sound like crap. Many of us would rather just put up with the fuel costs and keep things the way they were. Like the good old days. If you can't beat them, join them, right? Let's be honest though, trucks have never really been Toyota's primary money maker. But obviously, they're going to want to get as big of a piece of the pie as they can get. Toyota isn't the only one that's moving away from V8 engines. Dodge has as well, and even though Ford still sells the Coyote V8, they're focusing a lot more on those EcoBoost V6s. I don't even know what the heck GM is doing nowadays, like four-cylinder turbo Silverados? Ugh. The big three have been putting in a lot of work into developing these smaller turbocharged engines, and the truth is, people are buying them. Toyota already has kind of a bad reputation for you know, their trucks being outdated and them going for too long and letting their models get stale before a redesign. And even though it's what many of us would prefer, being hard-headed and sticking with the old outdated technology could have some pretty huge consequences for them. I think Ford's strategy of developing the EcoBoost while still offering truck buyers a traditional V8 engine is probably the way to go and I wish that Toyota would have done the same. Before giving up on the 5.7, why not give it a chance? Try to make it more fuel efficient. Made it to an 8 or a 10 speed transmission. Unfortunately, the likelihood of Toyota reversing their decision to leave the V8 engine behind them is pretty slim. But there's actually still one Toyota V8 engine left on the market currently that most people aren't aware of. It's the 2UR 5 liter V8 that's found in the Lexus LC500 and the IS500 F Sport. 471 horsepower of Japanese Bald Eagle Freedom. But something tells me that its days are numbered too. The bottom line is that if you want to own a V8 powered Toyota, you're going to have to buy a used one and make it last forever. Luckily, you've come to the right place if you want to learn how to do that. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and watch this video next.